I'd never knew that draw filing was a thing until recently, because mostly I'd just been a scoutmaster that taught, you know, the same things I was taught as a young boy by a, a couple of park rangers and a retired Forest Service guy, and we sharpened axes by pushing the file normally like this. Even on this uh, worn-out little Walmart file, where I'm concentrating on the bottom of the file, that worked really great. But then I learned about draw filing, and you know what? That's not such a bad idea. It works great on this jersey. When I was taking that down, trying to get it, you know, the bevel down to uh, a nice flat 17 and a half degrees. Um, you're sweeping it back and forth, and for the most part, it's working because I'm moving my anchor hand a little bit along with the uh, the radius. But that's a pretty clear cut, perfect radius from what you would imagine to be a larger circle. And it works when you do that. It's a little more complicated when you try different patterns of axes. If all of your axe profiles are not perfect arcs from a larger circle, you're going to need to make some adjustments. I'm on the road right now, so I'm using some clips from other videos. I have a lot of respect for the guy I saw do this, but he drilled a pivot hole in the middle of the pole for a jig, for a sander, to do with the sharpening bevel on his bit. And I know that's a technique people use for like a racing axe, but it has a perfect arc for a bit. And the next question I've got for you, is the radius to that arc the same on every axe? On some, it's going to be uh, maybe on the pole. Others that have a really curvy bit, it'll be on the cheek. Those that have a straighter bit line, it won't even be on the axe. It'll be back on the workbench somewhere when you're filing. So the way you would probably counter that is moving your anchor point as you go across the bit. But let's just look at a few of these patterns. Where can I put this? Oh, by the way, uh, I like beaver tooth. And I got some other pencils. I'm still on the first one. I, can't, I got a dozen of them. But um, when I swing that as if it's a file, some axes, it follows the bit just fine. That would work if I anchored it right there. So I could probably drill a, a pivot point on that axe. And it might work on this one. I don't know if I want a perfect arc on that one or not. But this one's kind of an extreme example. No doubt it's got some wear on it. But this one is a half wedge pattern. It has a straighter bit that I've actually myself added some curve to. But the pivot point's not even going to be on that far corner. It's, it's at the top, but it's going to actually be back from the bit a ways. The only way I'm going to get it to work is if I'm shifting my pivot point as I'm trying to do a draw filing technique. And I'm not sure I'll use a draw filing technique on this one. Uh, we'll find out because I'm going to hang this axe. In fact, I've got most of it done already in my next video. But on this one, look, if I even go to that top corner on the pole, um, it's not, it's, it's arcing too much. So the pivot point's going to have to be off the axe behind it somewhere and off that top corner. Here's another one I made just to hang. This is a four and a half pound fawn Dayton pattern. And that one that I was just looking at, that's also a Vaughn uh, Craftsman. Um, but now this one too, the arc, if I anchor it at the back of the pole, the arc's a, the radius is a little bit short to get the uh, effect that I want. So all I'm saying is when you're doing your draw filing, it's great technique for smoothing things out. It's not as aggressive as if you use a file just by pushing it. Um, but by drawing it like that, you get a nice, smooth, flat edge. It's lovely, but pay attention to where your anchor point is. I would not be drilling holes. Oh, you know, I couldn't stand it. Uh, you're going to ask, Joseph, how did you get your axes up to your hotel room? That's a little bit tricky. But I brought some up. From the truck, I carry about uh, oh anywhere from a dozen to two dozen when I go on the road. Uh, you'd be surprised how many hotels want work done and they don't really want chainsaw noise. But look at that. That's a Dayton pattern. It, the top part's straighter than the curves that comes back to the heel. So how would you uh, accommodate that with your draw filing technique? I did draw file that one. Notice the uneven sharpening bevel, what some call the primary bevel. Now here is um, a vintage well-used Michigan pattern axe. I believe this is a no-name. Um, great chopper, but I couldn't draw file that one. 
look, I can't find a center point um, for my file there. And it's really cheeky. I call them fish heads because it feels like you're holding a bluegill or a crappie in your hand. And I would just, I just, I just push filed that one and then put a stone to it. Should I have corrected the bit profile? I don't think so. I like it the way it is. You might want to put a perfect arc on it. All right, so here's a Plum National. And it was practically unused when I got it. Um, what are you going to do here? I did draw file that, but I was shifting my anchor point as I worked. For the toe, I was mostly anchored on the bottom of the pole. And for the heel, I was at the top of the pole. All three of these axes are excellent performers. I wouldn't alter a thing because I use mine. I'm not selling them for looks or making wall hangers. In the end, it's personal preference, uh, but did this help? 